Bitcoin. Is it a fraud? That is what J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon called the cryptocurrency last week. The comments said Bitcoin price is plunging on Friday after a huge rally in the valuation of it, but it is now back up close to $4,000. Joining me right now is Overstock.com founder and CEO Patrick Byrne. Patrick, always a very creative hat that you wear when you join us. I love that about you. What is this hat telling us? <laughs> I just came back from China. I just came back from Red China, mm -hmm. where I was speaking on Bitcoin, actually. I was over there the day that they shut down all the exchanges, just on Friday. Okay. So they are using Bitcoin effectively, you believe, in China, then? Uh, no. In fact, China is taking a position just like Jamie Dimon, where they've come out and said, oh, suddenly they're all afraid of it. You know, what do you know? The guys who run the, uh, the post office don't like Federal Express. The taxi companies don't like Uber. The guys who belong to this, this financial world of debt-based, fiat money, central banking, Keynesian spending, this magic money tree that they all grew up in, they don't like a form of currency that can't be controlled by a government. What well, a surprise. Part of it is that people don't understand it. And, and, and Mike Murphy, you, you said you agree with Jamie Dimon. I, I agree to a point. Uh, I, I think that a lot of people investing right now, whether it be in Bitcoin, it's trading Bitcoin or another one of the cryptocurrencies or trading uh, or investing through an ICO. I think a lot of it is a bubble and there is some fraud involved with it. I don't know about the underlying technology being a fraud. I think there could be some use there. But Patrick, I would say you look at a bank like J.P. Morgan. If the underlying technology has a use, they're a lot bigger than just dollar-based trading. They, JP Morgan can exist while they use a, a Bitcoin or a blockchain-type technology, right? Right, of course. And really, the, the, the key point is the technology under Bitcoin is called the blockchain. First, full disclosure, I happen to know Jamie Dimon. Jamie and my father were friends. My father's dead. Right, but he used to say, approvingly, Jamie Dimon's the toughest son of a gun in American business. Except he didn't say gun. But he, so I, I know Jamie for 20 years. He's a, he's a good guy. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the, the underlying technology of Bitcoin is the main event. It's called blockchain. And blockchain is, is going to be as disruptive to all kinds of institutions like banks as the Internet was itself to publishing. So that's really the main event. That usefulness, what gives uh, something um, money? It's, it's a commodity turns into money when it becomes useful. And this underlying technology of Bitcoin, this thing called blockchain, is extraordinarily useful. But how, and, but and that's here to stay. Explain, explain how you actually get paid. I mean, just to reiterate what Jamie Dimon said, Patrick, quote, it's worse than tulip bulbs. It won't end well. Somebody is going to get killed. Uh, it's just not a real thing. Eventually, it will be closed, Diamond said. And he even said, he <laughs> said, anybody trading Bitcoins at J.P. Morgan is going to be fired for just being stupid. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> Patrick. Well, re remember that a year and a half ago, Jamie Diamond wrote a letter to shareholders saying this, this is going to come eat our lunch. He was scared to death of it. I think what they thought was that they could get in front of it, and they're realizing they can't get in front of it. Uh, it's... It, it's not, stu you know, how, how high can Bitcoin go? The real question is how low can the dollar go? How low can all this fiat? I'd love to, I'll put it this way. I'd love to debate the metaphysical status of this thing, Bitcoin, that comes out of thin air with a couple years ago, Janet Yellen was creating 85 billion mm. new something every month. I think they called them dollars. Uh, they, you know, uh, at least this, at least this Bitcoin stuff is governed by the laws of mathematics and, and how much it gets created. No one, no one governs these government mandarins when they whisk Wait, new dollars into existence. Wait, governed no. by the law of mathematics? Yeah, Patrick, Amy Holmes here. Let me just jump in. You just said Bitcoin comes out of thin air, which is, I think, what scares a lot of people. And when you look at dollars, it has printed right <coughs> on there, you know, the full, full, full faith and credit of the United States government is behind it. So here's my question. You say that Bitcoin is useful. Then why aren't more people using it well first to your first point uh the dollar is backed by the taxing authority of you know the full faith and credit of the u.s treasury how much excess taxing authority do we think they have they've got zero excess taxing authority which is why we're running huge deficits so it's really backed by nothing more than our belief in it it's coming out of thin air and it's ungoverned these government mandarins can create all of it they want they created four and a half trillion of it in the last eight years bitcoin its creation is governed by it's coming into an existence at a predefined rate. In fact, there are monetary theorists like Taylor down at Stanford, not far from here, 
who've been, and Milton Friedman, my God, who uh, were saying, you know, for years we should have a, a, an instrument that comes into existence. The Federal Reserve should create it at a very fixed rate and not try to fine tune the economy by managing it. What you have in Bitcoin is a form of money that comes into existence at a very fixed rate governed by mathematical principles. And, and it's not really no, Bitcoin no good, that is the underlying. The underlying technology, as you said a moment ago, is blockchain. Right. And you exactly. were speaking at and that summit, the blockchain summit in China. Correct. And, and what people are realizing is that with blockchain, you can take out about 90 percent of the back office costs of all kinds of uh, mechanisms and banks and stock markets and such. That's why Overstock has been sort of pioneering the application of blockchain to Wall Street. You can not only take out the costs, but you can create a version of Wall Street where no one can cheat. All kinds of mischief that goes on on Wall Street can't be done in a version of Wall Street that's recreated on the blockchain. And what we have seen, and this is what I think scares Wall Street so much, what we've seen in the last 10 years, anyone right. who's awake, has seen that these banks have found ways to buy themselves regulators, buy themselves congressmen and senators and maybe judges and right. who knows hey, what. Patrick, maybe, one, one but last... you can't, they can't buy the laws of mathematics. Patrick, one last question. We just had this big hack into Equifax last week, and they talked that it could affect hundreds of millions of Americans out there. If somebody had their retirement savings or all of their money invested in Bitcoin and it was hacked, isn't there a possibility they could wake up and have nothing left? Well, great, great question. Uh, there is a lot of hacking that goes on around Bitcoin, just like there are around banks and companies like Equifax. Bitcoin itself has never been hacked. It's the most uh, hacked on thing in the world. Atta uh, hackers have been attacking it for seven years, never broken it. Really, if they can break Bitcoin, they can break. I used to study crypto the mathematics underlying cryptography down at Stanford. If people can break this cryptography, they can break the cryptography that underlies every, every credit card and everything in the world. So uh, it's that. Now, there are companies in the Bitcoin ecosystem that get hacked, just like banks get hacked. But that doesn't make the, the dollar bad. And similarly, that, that doesn't make Bitcoin itself bad. But are you worried that Bitcoin, because of its anonymity, uh, can be used by the bad actors, the terrorists, for example? Well, they, you know, they do. It's been used for, Bitcoin has been used for gun running and ecstasy dealing and stuff, but cocaine dealing. Last I checked, mm. the U.S. dollar is used for that stuff, too. Okay. People don't say we should outlaw the U.S. dollars. But I, I don't mean to in, tell anyone to invest in Bitcoin. I have no idea where the price is going to go, but the usefulness is here to stay. Pa Patrick, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks so much. Thank you, Maria. Appreciate it very much. Patrick Byrne is the CEO at Overstock.com.